Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Tabansi. We want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and where we give you guys a fresh perspective on things. And now we see them. And today, we got a pretty interesting show for you guys. Uh, but before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Now, uh, today, we got uh, we got something interesting uh, because you guys know the NBA season is starting tomorrow. Uh, and about a month or so ago, there was some chatter around you know, uh, low management. Now, for those of you who have followed this platform, you will know that I've been, I've always been one of those people, uh, that didn't support low management. I never thought that it worked. Um, some people tried to, you know, say this is science to me. I always thought it was like some type of pseudoscience. I didn't think it was real, uh, because they were saying that low management in essence, the idea of it was supposed to be a preventative measure where teams would implement so that they would ensure that players be, uh, bodies aren't being over, over like stress and overwork but also to prevent injuries but then what we were seeing over the last few years was that injuries were occurring at a much higher rate than they were in the past and it caused a lot of people like myself to begin to question whether or not low management was working now some people will f blindly follow what people tell them and say well that's what the doctors say and i'm like wait a minute so if you go to a doctor you want to you want to have a procedure done or something you don't get multiple opinions you just accept the first thing the first doctor told you that is that the way it works with you you don't know that it's always good to get multiple opinions on a particular thing but nevertheless a lot of people were subscribing uh to it then the nba recently announced that Again, through the science, they have discovered that low management doesn't prevent a damn thing. Something I think was that, that I thought a lot of us thought was pretty apparent, but for whatever reason, I think it made more sense when they heard it come out of <laughs> Commissioner Adam Silver's mouth. So this morning, uh, I was doing some research and I came across an article here from fadeawayworld.net and it was centered on Kevin Durant's stance on uh, low management coming into this season. So I want to read a little bit of what it has to say here. It says Sun star Kevin Durant turned 35 years old past sept this past September, but don't think for a second that he's got any plans to lighten his load for the upcoming season. As Durant explained in a recent conversation with the media, he's not in the business of sitting out games or lowering his minutes for the sake of preventing injuries. Some sh some bleep is going to happen. Is going to happen, said Durant. You tried to prevent me from being injured or being out there. I honestly don't know what good that does. Just let me play. Whatever happens, happens. And if we do what we have to do on the floor every night, guys won't have to play 40 minutes a night. We just got to be ready to play. Now, that's what Kevin Durant said. Uh, a current NBA player. He's not the first one that said this. We've also, I've also heard from another current NBA player in Paul George on his, on the Paul George podcast. Paul George said that he doesn't believe that low management works. He said he actually prefer, uh, prefers uh, the league the way it was when he first got into the NBA when he was playing for the Indiana Pacers, where he said that they used to have two a days. He felt like that was developing a callus and making his body stronger. And what teams are uh, uh, implementing now doesn't work. And then it made me remember over time a while ago, let's say about a year or so ago, when the NBA was discussing possibly lowering the amount of games in a regular season. And Adam Silvers was discussing this. And then they brought this to the panel that featured Malika Andrews, Kendrick Perkins, and Richard Jefferson. And when it came time for Richard Jefferson, who's a former NBA player to, to weigh in on you know what the NBA was possibly thinking of doing, which was shortening the season, he absolutely ripped into this modern NBA and its modern players. So what we want to do is want to play exactly uh, what Richard Jefferson had to say about the t at the time, talking about low management and the possibility of lowering games. And then we'll come back and continue on the show. Take a listen to what Richard Jefferson had to say here. What do you think of this, Rich? I think this is absurd. I think this is. Let me. Let me. Let me I just got trash here. This. This is. This is. This is my issue right here. Right, is that. You have game readies. You have Norma techs. There was years ago where players used to not travel. They would not travel uh, commercial. We have eliminated back-to-backs. We now have a, a week-long all-star break instead of instead of like three and a half days. Yep. And I remember guys used to have to catch flights, play the last game on Thursday, play in the game on Sunday, and then you would have a game on, on Tuesday, Wednesday. They have done every single thing. Every team now has sleep staffs. They have extra training staff. When I came into the league, you had two doubled as an equipment manager. Now you have a massage therapist to travel with teams. Now, guys, are, you want to shorten the season? 
Like, how much more do we have to make this coddling and all of this stuff go with the players? It makes absolutely no sense. Professional sports is not good on your body. It's supposed to separate the people that can do it from the people that can't do it. And while we do want our best product on the floor, part of greatness is longevity. That's what Michael Jordan, that's what that's what Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, that's what LeBron James, all of these guys, we talk about their greatness over a long period of time. And to keep eliminating this and dialing back to the point where it's like there's nothing else for the players to do. I think it is a joke. I think they should never do this. Now, if you were talking about the in-season tournament, I think that's 100% maybe if you wanted to just have a little bit more space. But this right here is the epitome of coddling players to make sure that everything is okay on top of the fact that players are taking rest days on top of the fact that they're taking rest days right now. So how are you going to give them rest days and then say, well, we're going to shorten it to 60 games. We're going to shorten it to 70 games. At the end of the day, they're still going to take time off. Tell them about the money. The money. Oh, they're they making they're all that money. On. I don't I'm think sorry. anyone else is going to be the team, going, These Rich. are the teams. These are the owners need to get on these. It's not just the players. Thank don't say you. the players. It's literally I've seen guys have a thumb injury and not be able to play in back-to-back -back because they didn't want their conditioning to be off. Right? Like, if you have a thumb injury, you should be in conditioning. And I'm going to stop because I'm getting too excited here. But the fact that we want to talk about shortening the season now with all of this stuff. You tore your ACL. I missed time before this. And it ain't just because of that. If guys aren't conditioning 24 hours a day to make sure that their bodies are taken care of, that's on them and that's on the team. But shortening the season, you're going to mess with records. You're going to mess with numbers. You're going to mess with so much of our basketball because this group or the way that's handled right now can't handle it. I'm off that. Uh, uh yeah, and carry on. There <laughs> carry on. So you heard what uh, Richard Jefferson had to say there. Now, some of you may believe this or not, but you know that there's some NBA fans that are actually in support of low management. Do you know this? Do you know that there's some NBA fans that actually work in the interests, work against their own interests? Do you know this? Do you know that there's some NBA fans that will try to intellectualize resting games when players are perfectly healthy? And then still patronizing that product. It's like you're paying to see players that you never saw. But you're like, ah, I understand it. And here's my whole issue with this. Here's my whole issue with this. We've heard numer on numerous occasions that this is the most advanced crop of NBA players ever. Even though when you think about this from a rational standpoint, that makes no sense. And I'll tell you why. A lot of people, when they say this, let me tell you why they're saying this. They're using the notion of, oh, well... Players, let's say in the 80s, in the 90s, uh, and the 2000s are not as evolved as these players. Because if you say players today are quicker, faster, stronger, you must be saying that some type of evolution took place. Correct? And then some of us would then have to ask, what evolution took place over the last 20 years? What evolution took place? Because I'm trying to figure it out. Because the same Kevin Durant that was playing in the early, uh, what, in the 210s or whatever it is, is the same Kevin Durant playing today. The same Stephen Curry that was drafted, what, 14, 15 years ago is the same Stephen Curry playing today and still killing it. So when we're talking about this new advanced, this, this set of new advanced players, when are we starting this off at? And I've always said that people are confusing macroevolution to microevolution. Now, one dunce in the comments was like, Charles always making stuff up. This is somebody that's never apparently read a book or anything like that. I actually used to sit down and watch debate after debate about after debate about evolution versus god i've watched countless i'm not just saying i've read a lot about it and a lot of people are confusing it too there's absolutely no way that players could have evolved to the point where you think that these guys are now totally different instead i believe players today are just as athletic as they've always been in my personal view i mean the human highlight reel dominique wilkins played in the 80s Who's a player that we can say is more athletic than him? Vince Carter played in the early 2000s, and he's considered to be the best dunker of all time. Name me the dunker today that's better than, uh, than uh, Vince Carter. You look at John Morant, who is an incredible athlete. But before there was John Morant, there was Derrick Rose. There was also Russell Westbrook. So for people to throw out this notion, I just thought that people were trying to sound smart about something they had no idea what they were talking about. To me, I think Kevin Durant summarized it perfectly. We are hoopers. We are here to perform a particular task. And when we go out here, I want to be able to do it at the highest level as much as I can. And I support that. He's like, whatever happens, happens. 
but I'm not going to be sitting out here waiting to see whether or not I get it, whether or not I see I get it, whether or not I get injured or not. I'd rather be out there playing, and then whatever happens, we roll the dice on it. To me, there's no way you can prevent it. If an injury is going to occur, it is going to occur, and in most cases, injuries are random. When somebody tears an Achilles tendon, it is a, it is a random event. I've read I've read upon it. You cannot predict an Achilles tear. It can happen at any moment in time. And that's what happened to Kevin Durant. So to me, um, I appreciate Ke uh, Kevin Durant's position. I also appreciate uh, Richard Jefferson's position. I also like the fact that the NBA is doing away finally with this ridiculous low management. And let's get back to the games. Let's get back to the games. Recently, we interviewed um, uh, Michael Cooper on our show. And I asked him about this very topic. He's like, wait a minute. Today, uh, medicine is better. Today, uh, training is better. Uh, training facilities are better. Logistics in terms of travel is better. And you're telling me guys can't play more today? Uh, can't play as much as they did in the past? Help me figure it out. So to me, man, I 100% support the message that Kevin Durant put out there. So what I want to know from you guys is what do you think about what Kevin Durant had to say in terms about in terms of low management? Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section. We catch you on the next show. Peace.